Today, we are going to look at how to set up Kali Linux on the Raspberry Pi 4. Here is the Raspberry Pi 4, and this is the 4 gigabyte model. To begin today's video, I'm going to reference this article here from the Raspberry Pi website. Lots of people have been having problems setting up the Kali Linux image on the 8 gigabyte model of the Raspberry Pi. I use both of these Raspberry Pi models at home, and I'm going to talk to you about how I managed to work around setting up the Kali Linux image on the 8 GB model. Now, this article here talks about setting up the Kali Linux image on the 4GB model first. And again, what I have done here is I've just run these commands which were referenced in this article. If you need to set up the Kali Linux image on the 8GB model, and if you are having problems, you can run these two commands and then it should work for you on the 8GB model. Now, for today's video, I'm going to be showing you where you can download the Kali Linux image from the Raspberry Pi. And I'll also be showing you this sticky fingers image as well. So if you go to offensive security, this will allow you to download the image here for the Raspberry Pi 4. So you should be looking at link number three. And once this has been downloaded, you can use either this piece of software here to image it to the Raspberry Pi. This is a piece of software which I commonly use when I'm imaging SD cards. Or you can use the Raspberry Pi OS Imager. And this is the software which I'll be using in today's video. I will put all of these links in the description underneath the video. Now, before we get on to imaging the Kali Linux image, I want to have a look at this sticky fingers image. Now, this has been referenced by many, many ethical hackers online. And if you are new to ethical hacking, or even if you're not new to ethical hacking, I would recommend that you also burn one of these images onto an SD card and make a comparison to how is this different from the standard Kali Linux image. There are lots of extra built-in libraries and tools which you can use as an ethical hacker. I'm not going to talk about this too much now. You can have a look at this link underneath the video and you can try running this yourself and make that comparison. So to begin with today, I'm going to open up my downloads folder and I'm gonna open up the Raspberry Pi imaging software. Now you can see that this is already running at the moment. I'm gonna select on cancel and show you how you can set this up for a new SD card. Now, the great thing about this piece of software is if you are looking to set up another image separate to Kali on a Raspberry Pi, this software does have lots of built-in libraries which you can use to image an SD card. So very, very useful if you are fond of the Raspberry Pi. To get started today, the first thing that you should do is you should erase your current SD card. This will be done when you image the SD card anyway, but I would still recommend that you run this when you are setting up a new image for Kali. When you are ready and you have downloaded the image from the Offensive Security website, you can select this image from your downloads folder, and then you can select the SD card that you are going to burn this image to, and then select on write. And it's as simple as that. Now, in the next part of this video, I'm going to show you what happens when you log into the Raspberry Pi using Kali Linux, and I'll show you a couple of commands which you should run on a regular basis if you are using Kali Linux. So I'll see you in a few minutes time. Okay, so welcome back. And I have just inserted the SD card into my Raspberry Pi 4 and we are waiting for the login screen to appear. The default credentials we're going to be using are Kali and then Kali again. And once we are logged in, you'll be able to see the desktop of the Raspberry Pi. Now we are set up with Kali Linux on our Raspberry Pi. There are a couple of commands which you are going to want to run on a regular basis to ensure that your device is up to date. So the first one is sudo and it is at and update. And this will make sure that your system is up to date. 
Now, this shouldn't take too long for your system to update, and it shouldn't take too long for mine to update as I run this on a daily basis. If you are using Kali Linux every day or just a couple of times a week, I would recommend that you use these next two commands as soon as you log in. And the next one you should look at running is the upgrade command. So sudo apt and upgrade. And again, you can see that it hasn't taken too long to upgrade my system. Now, next thing we're going to do is have a look at how we can change from the Kali at Kali account to root. So I'm going to type in sudo and bash. And this is going to allow us to change from Kali over to root. Next thing we want to do is we want to set up a new password for our root account so we can log in as root. So we're going to type in password and root here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to set a new password for this account. Now that we've done that, we can now log out up here and we can log back in as root. And that means that we won't need to type sudo every time we want to make a change to our system. Now, before I finish this session today, I would like to go over to our website here so you can find different videos and information which we are posting on ethical hacking. We have just written a new 120 hour course, which is instructor led. So if you go to the program section of our website, you'll be able to find a little bit more about this course and the different things that it includes. In our next set of videos, we are going to be showing people how to set up Kali Linux using VMware on both Mac and Windows, and we will be exploring other topics such as Shodan. Looking forward to seeing you in our next video soon.